Okay, today I'm gonna show you guys how to test a crank snap sensor and a cam snap sensor on this Mercedes W212. There are two things that you will need to test the two sensors. First would be the multimeter and second of all because these are hall sensors so you guys will need a oscilloscope. Okay, so now we're gonna have a look at the wide ring diagram on WIS. And for those of you that who don't know what it is, it's the, the workshop information system of Mercedes. If you don't have WIS, it is still doable, but you gotta know how much voltage the ECM sends out to the sensors. This just sound clearly on WIS, but um, for the sake of this video, I assume that you don't have WIS. So I'll tell you the numbers, which are 5 volt for the crank sap position sensors and 12 volt for the cam sap sensors and in addition to the supply wire there are also ground wire and the signal wire here I have the measuring order make sure that you follow this order and not messing them up and first we will measure the power supply wire which is 12 volt for this cam sap sensor with the key on position or um, you can push one button to the on position without starting the engine then we will measure the ground with the key off you will need to wait two to three minutes for the can to go to sleep and that's it the remaining wire will be the signal wire okay so this is the location of the cam sap sensors on this Mercedes uh, 212 we will now measure the power supply to this sensor. Make sure you choose 20 volt on your DC voltage scale on your multimeter. On the wiring diagram, I already know it is pin number one, but if you don't have access to the diagram, you can start measure them randomly. And what gives you 12 volt would be the supply wire. Then we will measure the ground wire using continuity on your multimeter. Make sure that you turn your key off and wait two to three minutes for the CAN network to go to sleep. What gives you continuity or the beeping sound on your multimeter will be the grounding wire. After this, you already identify ground and power. So, by exclusion, the last one is definitely the signal wire. The process of identification for the crank stop sensor is exactly the same, so you just need to mimic what we've been doing here. Now we have all three positions of ground, power and signal. We will then backprop the signal and ground using our oscilloscope to receive hall signal on our software in order to see if we have a bad or failing sensor. In this case, my oscilloscope has two channels, so we will backprop both camshaft and crankshaft sensor so we can see the signal differences that they output. This is my software for collecting the hall signal. Yours might be a little bit different. And now we will need to start the engine so that the ECM will send out the signal so we will be able to collect enough. The bottom graph in this case is the crank sub signal. As you can see, the two missing teeth as it reaches the top that center. The upper graph is obviously the cam sub sensor. And in this scenario, both sensors give us very good signals. So we can come to a conclusion that they're in perfectly working conditions. Alright, so this is the end of this video. I hope you can learn something here and be able to figure out whether you have a good sensor. If you have any questions, please comment down below or go to our Facebook and message us so we can help you out.